Hello, hello. Good evening, guys. Hello. Hello, good evening. Hello. Hello, welcome. How are you guys? Hello, good evening. Hi, so hi, Jerixa. How are you today? Good to join you. Thank you. Good. Thank you for asking me. What about you, Sabrina? How are you? I'm fine, teacher. And you? Great. Yes. Wow, today is Monday again, right? Is this the last um, week of the course? Yes, right? It is. I believe so, yes. Yes. No, teacher. Wow. Oh, no, 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 because remember, <laughs> the end of our, of our week is Wednesday now, right? No, let's see. Wednesday. Is it Wednesday or is it, oh my God, Thursday? Because I think of it's Thursday. Thursday. Thursday, right? Yeah. Monday. Oh, okay. Hello, Amilcar. Hi, Lisette. Hello, hello. How are you? Hello, good evening, teacher. Good evening. Sorry that my camera is off, but I'm trying to connect it. I don't like the other one. And that one is the one is the only one that is working. The other one is not working. I mean, the the good one. <laughs> Hello, Marielos, how are you? Hello, Kitchen. Hi, Carla. Hi, Luis. Hi, Jaime. Hello, Maggie. Hi, Christian. Hi, Stefania. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> All right, let's Hi, teacher. See. Good evening. I, I am a listener today, teacher. Okay, no worries. So, yes, the other one is working. <laughs> one uh, moment. When I can to participate, I, I try. Thank you, Jaime. I really appreciate that you tell me, okay? So I will okay, be aware teacher. of this. Thank okay, you. thank you, teacher. You're welcome, Jaime. Okay, guys, let me see. Let me try in that way. Maybe it works. <clears throat> Let's see, Mabel is joining us. Yes, Jessica, hello, welcome, Jessica. Let's see. I will go through the attendance list, guys. Allow me just a moment. Yes, finally. Okay. So let me go through the attendance list. Angela Estefania Marroquín Martinez. Present teacher. Thank you. Cristian Jose Lopez Perez. Present. Estela Mabel Oriana del Cid. Present teacher. Fátima Denise Aguilar Mar Márquez. Mar 
Jaime Antonio Velar Cortés. Present teacher. Thank you. Jessica del Carmen Vázquez Vázquez. Present teacher. Great. Jonathan Alexis González Torres. Julio César Ramírez Arevano. Carla Elizabeth Escobar Esquivel. Present. Kenny Lizeth Cuer de Barrientos. Kevin Alexander Aguilar Bonilla. Linda Magali García Montoya. Lizeth del Carmen Hernández May Smith. Present. Luis Ernesto Gómez García. Present teacher. Marcos Amilcar Mancía Gutiérrez. Present teacher. Marcos Antonio Melgar Pérez. Marielo Janet Cornejo Arazo. Present teacher. Thank you. Marielo, can you stay today in the one on one session? Yes, I can. Thank you. Thank you, Marielo. I really appreciate it. Marta Lidia Godínez. Um, Sabrina Lizeth García Orellana. Present. Surma Yarexa Oliva Córdoba. Present. José Nelson Ruiz Moreno. Oh, one moment, guys. Jos, uh, Yuri Alexandra Flores Parada. Iliana Carolina Calderón Cisneros. No, okay. Just allow me one moment, guys, because I'm just trying to verify the people uh, that is listeners today. One moment. I didn't see um, this before. Okay, Marta, Jaime, Maggie. And, 
Oh, okay. That's it, that's it. Okay, one moment. All right, I got the listeners already. Um, good evening, teacher. Good evening, Fatima. How are you? Fine. Great. Yo me paso la lista, teacher. Sí, Fatima. Ya la pasé, Fatima. La mencioné en un inicio. Fátima Denise Aguilar Márquez. Bueno, la voy a anotar ahorita. Deme un segundito. Ok. Great. Fátima, thank you. Thank you, teacher. Let's see. So I will share the screen right now, guys, and we will start with the class. I hope that you had uh, rest a lot in your weekend, okay? And also, I I hope that you can have a good time with your family, with your friends, okay? But yes, we will continue classes today. So let me share the screen. Here I have it. All right, so guys, today uh, we will learn about the idioms, okay? We will start um, learning about idioms today, which is basically you, well, it's a topic that you already know, some of you maybe, because previously we had a, sorry, we had a like a kind of, uh, um, activity, right? That we were giving to, I mean, I was giving to you idioms, some idioms, one per class. We stopped doing it, right? Because it was just for one course. But <clears throat> we will learn this for two, uh, for two um, classes, okay? And this will be the number one. So that's, that's why it says part number one. So we are in the class 13 today, okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh my God, all right. So I, I just want to have a review, guys. And this review is about the present perfect. One second. It's about the present perfect. That was the last class that we um, learned on Friday. Okay, and we said that the present perfect tense refers to an action or a state that either occurred at any defined time in the past and began in the past mm -hmm. and continued to the present. Okay, so that means that the present perfect is something, I mean, it's an action, sorry, that it starts in the past, the rather that red spot that we have here. One second, let me do something. Let me choose the, this one. Okay, so it's the red spot and that is the person who is doing it. That is a subject, right? So the subject performed the, abs the action, sorry, in the past and continue to the present time. That means that it's important. That action is important in the present. That is why it's called the present perfect. Okay, this is not past, this is not present, this is present perfect, okay? So, <clears throat> we said that we had this uh, structure, you already uh, practiced this uh, structure in the affirmative, we have subject, we have uh, um, the auxiliary verb have or has, in case we're talking about third person, plus past participle, easy like that. In the negative form is subject. Then we have the auxiliary verb have or has, and then we have the not. If you want to have it contracted, then you say haven't or you say hasn't plus the past participle. You already know what is the past participle because previous class we talked about the past participle is the third line 
of the column. I mean, it is the, sorry, it's the third line of the chart of the verse, okay? You have the infinitive or base form, then you have the past simple, and then you have the past participle. So the past participle are, uh, is the one that you're going to use for this structure, okay? And we have the interrogative form uh, in which we start with um, auxiliary verb have or has plus subject plus participle verb complement and question mark. Very important. So, <clears throat> for example, I have tried sushi. I have not tried sushi. Have you tried sushi? Okay. So here, here you have the three examples in the three um, in the three structures, okay? Okay, now let's um, have a practice, okay, about this. Go to the page 32, guys. Go to the page 32. I will uh, open the page 32 here. <clears throat> okay, here we have it. Um, yes, this is something we already reviewed previous class. So we will go ahead and focus on this, okay? We will work on the page 32 and the exercise number five and six. Let's write affirmative and negative sentences using the prompts. The prompts are those here and here. Those are the prompts, okay? <clears throat> Sorry, here you have the prompts. Okay, those are the prompts. Okay, you will use the prompts to, to write affirmative and negative statements. For example, in the number one, I have Mar Mar Mario change the fuse. Okay, how would I make affirmative and negative in this example? I will say Mario, I will make the affirmative first. Mario has changed the fuse. So the negative form will be Mario hasn't changed the fuse. Ooh, sorry. So here you have what you have to do, guys. You just need to put it in affirmative and then in negative. That's it, okay? Then let's do the number two, the number three, four, five, and six. So basically we will work in five exercises. All right. One moment. Let me share with you a screenshot. Once you finish with the exercises, guys, which you have, uh, let me see how long. I believe that will be easy for you because you already practiced. So let's have five minutes to work on that. Five minutes to work. And then let me share a picture of it. One moment. Okay. I got a picture. Oh, no. I, I, I would like to share a picture with you of the exercise five and six because later on we will work in the exercise number six and the exercise number six guys it's all about our, our role play sorry in this role play we will go and prepare uh let's see okay do you remember we're talking about problems, about how to report problems, okay? So we will continue working on that. <clears throat> about uh, expressing how to, uh, how to report a problem. But in that case, guys, we will work on, uh, we will work, sorry, we will create the role play using the present perfect, okay? the present perfect. So that will be a short conversation using the present perfect. You can take a look to this conversation as a, as a model, okay? <clears throat> you can take a look to this conversation. I will send it to you so you have it as a reference. Le voy a mandar esta conversación para que la tengan como referencia que pueden hacer una conversación más 
bueno, más pequeña que esta, ¿ok? Pero pueden tener una idea de que en realidad vamos a hacer una conversation o un role play después de hacerlo de las um, oraciones. Ese role play lo vamos a hacer utilizando present uh, perfect, ¿ok? Usted ya practicó cómo hacer el, el present perfect en affirmative and negative and interrogative form, ¿ok? You already practiced that. Now it's time to practice the speaking, the speaking uh, part, ¿ok? Speaking part. So, una vez finalicemos con eso, guys, vamos a seguir con lo que es el tema del día de ahora, que son los idioms, ¿ok? Así que les voy a mandar ese eh, roleplay como referencia para trabajar en el ejercicio número 6. So, we will work in exercise number 5 and exercise number 6. We have 5 minutes for exercise number 5 and for exercise number 6 we have 10 minutes, ¿ok? Short conversation, guys. As long as you practice the present continuous, that will be great, ¿ok? So, let me... Oh, we are just a few today. We're just 14. Why? Okay, let me see. I will create the breakout rooms. Angela Estefania. Mm. Okay, I'm, I'm uh, assigning you to the groups, guys. Could you please click on, click and join? Oh, sorry, Jaime. Let me see. Cosmin Sin, Marcos, Marielo, Sabrina, Yarixa, click in join, please. Okay, here you are. Angela, en Fátima, Cristian, en Mabel, Carta, en Carla, en Iset, sorry, Marcos en Marielo, Sabrina en Zulma, Luis Ernesto en Marcos Antonio. Click on join, please. Click on join. Marcos Antonio, click on join, please. Marcos, are you there? Okay, great. Sería la segunda de production. Teacher, ¿verdad que todas las vamos a pasar en positivo y negativo? O digamos, solo las positivas positivas y las que salen negativas serían negativas. Oh, you're right. Let me see. I didn't notice that. You're right. So it will be depending on, on the prompts. Va a ser dependiendo de cuál le diga que haga. Yo pensé que íbamos a hacer una y una, pero no, ya veo que sí va a depender de eso. Depending on the prompt. Bye. Ahorita le voy a decir a, tu, a los demás. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you a lot. Pero si va a ser una entonces, dependiendo del prompt. Aunque si usted quiere practicar más, pues, it's fine, right? <ríe> no, pero por el tiempo no solamente uno. De regreso, le puedo decir a los demás que, sorry. Gracias, Tich. Thank you, Fátima. I'll be back, ¿ok? Ya regreso. Yes. Hello, guys. Sorry to interrupt you. In the part number one, it is just one sentence. Sorry, it was my mistake. It was my bad. It is just one sentence depending on the prompt. 
Okay, if the pronoun is, shows a negative form, then you write a negative form. But if you have a affirmative, then you write an affirmative. Okay, it's just one. And the exercise five about the sentence. Exactly, exercise five. Mm -hmm. Just one, just one sentence. Yeah, sorry guys, okay. my bad. Mm -hmm. If you I have any it. question, let me know, okay? No more, no more than one. Oh, if you want to practice, you can do the negative and affirmative, but it was my mistake. You will write uh, the exercise. I mean, the sentence depends on the prompt. Okay. Abby, hello guys. Sorry to interrupt you. How are you today? Sorry. Hello, sorry to interrupt you. How are you? Fine? Fine, Hello, teacher. Okay, Bye. sorry. I, I just wanted to say that in the part number five, <clears throat> it was my bad. It is just one sentence, okay? It is depending on the prompts. If it is a negative, you put in a negative. If it is a positive, you put it in a, I mean, you write it down in a positive, in an affirmative form, okay? So they are not two sentences, but they are just one sentence, okay? okay. Just one, okay. If you have any question, let me know, guys. Okay, teacher. Thank you. Hello, hello, girls. Sorry to interrupt you. I just wanted to mention that in the exercise number five, there is just one, um, there is gonna be just one uh, sentence. Okay, depending on the prompt, just one. Oh, okay. uh, sorry, it was my bad. Thank you, girls. Any okay. question? Let me know. Okay, okay, I think the group has not stopped. Okay, sorry, okay. <laughs> I think that it, that it is there onward 12, 12, not 13. Ah, uh, really? Oh, great, right. on the platform. Okay, thank you for letting me know. That's great then, because at the end you're practicing the homework. I mean, you're doing the homework, right? Great. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, girls. And I'm sorry, I just click and I couldn't <laughs> go back. <laughs> I mean, I, I could go back, but not at that moment, right? <laughs> so thank you. Okay. Okay. Entonces, entonces solo sería una Hello, girls. Sorry to interrupt you. In the bar number five, there is going to be just one exercise, okay? Okay. So one uh, in the bar number five, there's going to be just one sentence. Just one sentence, okay? Una oración. En el número cinco. Yo, sorry, I said that it was going to be two, pero va a depender de la oración o de las palabritas que estén ahí. Ah, sí. Sorry, yes, it's going bueno, to be yeah. good one. O sea, in the first is just Mario has changed the fuse. If it is an affirmative, affirmative. If it is negative, you put it in negative, okay? Ah, okay. All right, thank you, girls. Okay. I'll be back, okay? You let me know whenever you have questions. Hello, Indiana. Hi, Jonathan. Are you there? Hello, hello. Teacher, sorry que me conecté tarde, pero es que estoy en un proyecto de trabajo ahorita, entonces oh, estoy de oyente. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, what about, okay, you're a listener today. <clears throat> sí, 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 sí. Okay, great. Indiana, are you there? A Eliana, la voy a unir a otro grupo que estén trabajando, ¿ok? Ok, teacher, Para que, que les ayude. Sí, vamos a hacer una conversación y vamos a... Give me a moment. Y vamos a completar el ejercicio en la página 32. El ejercicio 30. número 5. Sí. Vaya. Thank you. Ahorita la voy a... Um... A mover a con los chicos, ok. Gracias, Elena.
person. The product, the product hasn't stopped. Hello guys, Ileana is here with you. Please um, help her and try to try to make it uh, in three. I mean with three, okay? Three people here. Okay. Try to include her, okay? Please guys, thank you. Okay. Okay, just one and number, number two, the product has the production hasn't stopped. Oh um, by also take the positive. The product, the product, the product, no, the production, the product, the production, our team has, 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 has been stopped. Stop. Así como está escrito, stop. No, es stop. Con... Después de stop normal sigue P, E, D otra vez. O sea, stop con doble P y al final E, D. Stop. Ajá. Stop. 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 A T al final. Stop. 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 Usted estaba hablando. You was speaking. I was. <laughs> or, or the teacher. The teacher. Hi. The teacher. <laughs> Stop. The core. Y fíjense que las que terminan como con una consonante creo se le da, se le duplica y se agrega ed si no me equivoco uh -huh. eh. you are check uh, how do you say reinitiate? How uh, you start? Start. Start. Can I restart a computer? No. Uh -huh. Start. Mm -hmm. Start. Restart. Restart. Start. Uh, restart. Okay. Restart. Oh. <clears throat> start. With ED. But it is a printer. Is the same or the same? Mm -hmm. Restart the restart the, the printer. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Restart. Oh really? Because it's the piano. You really you have to. Uh, no, have you have you, you? have porque, uh -huh. you have restart. have you porque es una pregunta verdad uh -huh. es have una pregunta you? Uh -huh. entonces have you uh -huh. restart you restart restarted the printer 
Uh -huh. uh, yes, I have. Uh, yes, I have. I have a change, change, change it. Uh, the turner, turner, así es. Mm. Se puede decir oh, card 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 Check the card. Card, card disease. Así. Eh, de como como deletreo los cartuchos C A R R T T R el equipo de material entonces sería has has de man como para decirte, quizás tendrás que reemplazarla. Es has, ¿verdad? Sí. Has. We. Es que el, el equipo de mantenimiento eh, tiene que reemplazar la batería. Por decirle si has de más. Mm, pero yo te voy a decir, maybe has replace the ah, computer. También. Sería? Maybe has replaced the computer. It has, sí. Yes, uh -huh. our team has. Our team has fixed the equipment. With none. Okay. En negativo. All team Hassan. Hassan. Fix, fix. The equipment. Equip, equipment, equipment. 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 Sorry? Equipment. Ah, equipment. Thank mm -hmm. you. You're Equip welcome, Marquitos. Uh -uh. Equipment. Uh -uh. Equipment. Equipment. Maybe. Pero si te si te estoy diciendo a ti que reemplace la computadora, ¿cómo es? Maybe, oh, maybe you. No, porque sería el equipo, o sea, el equipo de mantenimiento es el que va a reemplazar eso. The maintenance equipment has to, has, has changed. Ahí lo están haciendo en 
Pre present, present perfect. O como es, girls? No. Que queremos poner. Uh -huh. eh, como que ellos van a reemplazar las computadoras. Ah, ok. Entonces, the, um, uh, the maintenance equipment will change, will replace, sorry, will replace the computers. The, the maintenance? The maintenance. Esa es la, la del uh, mantenimiento, maintenance. The maintenance equipment. No, 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 sorry. The maintenance staff sería en ese caso. Staff. Uh -huh. The maintenance staff. Has replaced the computer. Así dicho. No, porque como usted lo quiere hacer en futuro. Ah. Ajá. Uh -huh. Is going to change or it will change? Will sorry, is going to replace or will replace? O puede decir the maintenance team, the maintenance team. Ahorita se lo mando aquí. Creo que sería mejor. Ajá, the maintenance team. I, the maintenance team will replace the equipment. Will replace the equipment or the computers. Ahí se lo puse. Pero eso sería en pasado, ¿verdad? Perdón, en futuro. Ya no sería. ¿A dónde me lo pusiste? Ahí lo puso la teacher en el chat. Bye. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome, girls. Teacher, ¿cómo se pronuncia my maintenance? Maintenance. 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 Uh-huh. Maintenance. Maintenance. Maintenance, exactly. Maintenance. Pero le dejo, the maintenance team will replace the computer or huh? the equipment, the computer. The computers, uh-huh. The one that fits better for you. The computers. <laughs> Okay, girls, I'll be back, okay? We will come back in two more minutes. Okay, teacher. I have because I forget, I forget. Uh -huh. I forgot. <laughs> Sí, lo olvidé. Because, because, because. ¿Eso respondería usted o yo? Eso respondería yo. Sería entonces, vea. ¿Cómo Carla, you send the records? Hello guys, how are you? ¿Cómo vamos? ¿Todo bien? Yes, yeah, teacher, fine. Ahí vamos right. queriendo. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's try to try to uh try to come back in one minute if possible, okay? Okay, teacher. Thank you. Va, okay. entonces sí, se en este. Mhm. Uh -huh. Sí, debemos. Mhm. Uh -huh. Sí, de... 
Si es plural, tendría que ser de. They have. Yes. Mm -hmm. well. ¿Cuál me dijo? They, creo que es have, they have. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, they have. Yes, they have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Y luego, a um, mí le cargamos. Mm -hmm. No sé, Gray. Vamos a ver. Gray. Mm -hmm. yeah, I see, by the way, this one. Ah, sí, podemos usar este. I, I see. By, by the way, the te technis, technician is coming. Para que lo vayan a ver y lo, lo cambien lo, o lo reparen. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Digo, by ah, ajá, I see. Ajá, I see. Ah, by, I... by the way, ajá. by the way, the technician is coming. Okay. Uh -huh. Completo, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Ay, y podemos terminar con la misma despedida o no. Sí, se puede. Sí, porque ya están poniendo que regresemos a la sala. Uh -huh. Sí, ahí la, ahí la continuamos. Pero sí, ahí la podemos finalizar. Thank you for joining back, guys. <clears throat> Did you finish? I will share the screen so we will uh, resolve the exercises, okay? All right, uh, we will work on the affirmative and the negative statements using the prints. Who can help me with the number one? We will do them uh, just orally, okay? Who can help me with the number two? Sorry, number two. <clears throat> Mario has changed the fuse. Great, Mario has changed the fuse. Great, Sabrina, could you please choose another person to go to the number two? I mean, to resolve the number two? Uh, Marco Hamilka. All right, Hamilka, what do you have in the number two? The, well, the production production has not stopped. Stopped. Very good. Great. Okay, Hamilka, choose another person. Uh, Fatima. Fatima, could you please help us with the number three? Our team have fixed the equipment. Great. Our team has fixed the equipment. Good job. What about number four? Could you please choose another person, Fatima? Um, or number four? Lisette. Lisette, thank you. Thank you, Fatima. The secretary may announce copies. The secretary, um, 
has made, has right? made, sorry. Enough copies, very good. Oh, the number four, sorry, I believe it's missing. Could you please choose another person, Lisa? Mm. Marielos, Janet. Thank you, Marielos. What do you have in the number four? Jenny mm -hmm. has not flown the car. Plugged. Uh huh. The car. <clears throat> Very good. Jenny has not plugged the, the cords. Very good. Marielos, could you please choose the, uh, another person for resolving the number five? Sorry, the number six. Carla, Carla. All right, uh, Carla. Thank you, thank you a lot. Number six. Yeah, number six. Thank you, Carla. Um, the teishme, pronunciation the. Oh, the, the technician. The technician has checked the connector. Okay, great, perfect. The technician has checked, checked the connector. Very good. Okay, uh, guys, do me a favor and repeat after me. Ch uh, that will be with ed, right? Esta lo voy a hacer con las pronunciaciones de ed. Changed. Let's repeat. Changed. Changed. Um, equipment. 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 Este es con la R también lo voy a hacer. Plugged. 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 Teacher. Mm -hmm. Solo plug es un verbo. Y hay otro cuando le agregamos un plug. Ajá, exactly. Plugged ah, son de distintos. Yes. Ah, yes. enchufar plugged. y desenchufar, ¿verdad? There you go. Ajá, exactly. Ah, pues me equivoqué, Janet. <laughs> Okay, it's fine. Thank you. Okay, uh, next one. Secretary. 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 Enough. 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 Uh, technician. Technician. Check. 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 Uh -huh. There you go. With T at the end. With uh, pass, right? This is check. But in pass will be checked. All right? Checked. Mm -hmm. that, that's right. Okay. Very good, guys. So let's go ahead and work on the role, please. I will ask. Um, Julio Cesar, are you there, Julio Cesar? I know you was not here for the role, please, but could you please help us to choose the next person that will present the role, please? No, he's not here. Okay, let's see. Jessica, are you there? Yes, teacher. Okay, Jessica, I want to tease you. I, I want to ask you, I want to ask you if you can help us to choose a person to present the role play. The, just to choose a person. Just choose mm -hmm. one person. In the class, teacher. In the class, yes. Okay. Uh, Marco Antonio. Okay, Marcos Antonio and partner will go then, okay? Thank you, Jessica. Uh, before okay. you go, before you go, guys, I will go through the attendance really quick, okay? Angela Estefania Marroquín Martinez. Present teacher. Cristian Jose Lopez Perez. Present. Estela Mabel Oriana El Cid. Present. 
Fátima Denise Aguilar Mar Márquez. Present teacher. Jaime Antonio Velar Cortés. Jessica del Carmen Vázquez. Present. Vázquez. Present. Jonathan Alexi González Torres. Present teacher. Jonathan, me iba a poner todo su nombre, please. Thank you. Ah, ok, ahorita lo veo. <coughs> Julio César Ramírez Arevalo. Sí. Thank you. Uh, Carla Elizabeth Escobar Esquivel. Present. Thank you. Ka Kenny Lizeth Coyar de Barrientos. Kevin Alexander Aguilar Bonilla. Linda Magali García Montoya. Lizeth del Carmen Hernández Mismit. Present. Luis Ernesto Gómez García. Present teacher. Marcos Amilcar Mancía Gutiérrez. Present teacher. Marcos Antonio Melgar Pérez. Present teacher. Marta Lidia Godínez. Sabrina Lisset uh, García Orellana. Present. Present, teacher. No, 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 no. Marta Lidia, right? Marielos. Marielos? Ay, no le escucho. Marielos, sí, sí. Marielos. Ah, Marielos. Ah, ok. Thank you, Marielos. Mm. Surma Yerixa Oliva Córdoba. Present. José Nelson Ruiz Moreno. Yuri Alexandra Flores Parada. Iliana Carolina Calderón Cisneros. Present teacher. Ok, perfect. All right, guys, thank you very much for that. Now it's time for Marcos Antonio and partner. Ok, you're going to start, guys. Thank you. You don't have partner. Uh, you are group, right? You are a group of three. Luis, Marcos, and Ileana. It's... Okay, uh, I okay. start. I start, Go. Luis. Okay. Uh, what wrong with the car, Luis? Hello, Marcos. Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I have checked it. Uh, everywhere and it won't turn on. That's true. How, how about the battery? Uh, have you checked the oil or level of oil of your car or motor? Yes, I have. And the technician has checked or it too, we, we have not verified the other uh, PS of the car. And the teacher almost, he has the same problem with your car. Uh, yeah, I heard, I heard, I heard that uh, has the 99 things. Um, I see by the way, I see by the way the technician is coming if do you want. Great. I hope he can fix the problem and to sleep. <laughs> okay. Bye. Okay, guys, fine, very good. It's an improvised teacher. Really? <laughs> yes. Okay, great. That's good then. Um, could you please just repeat after me? Sorry, because there was a moment that I couldn't listen because of my headsets, but I I got three. Uh, could you please repeat after me, guys? Uh, both of you, check. 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 Verify. Verify. Maintenance. Maintenance. 
Maintenance. Maintenance. Mm -hmm. Maintenance. Maintenance. Good. All right. Um, Luis, choose another person, please. Um, Stella Mabel. All right, Mabel and Christian. Let's do it, guys. Hello. Good evening. <laughs> este, we are going to start. Uh, hi, can you help me, Christian? Yes, I can. What is your problem? My printer has not worked well. Oh, really? Have you restarted the printer? Yes, I have. I have changed uh, the toner to the toner to. Have you made cleaning it? No, I haven't. Do you need a technician? Yes, I do. I have called him. Great. I hope the technician can help you with the problem. Thank you. <laughs> okay, very good. Great. Okay, so guys, just repeat after me one word. Uh, word. Worked. Worked. There you go. Worked with T at the end. That's the sound that is difficult, right? That sound is difficult for all of us. T sound. But we will get accustomed to that, guys. Okay? Good job. Uh, Christian, could you please choose another person? Let me see. Carla Elizabeth Escobar. All right, Carla. Oh my God. And partner. Lisette. Lisette. Okay, Carla and Lisette, let's do it. Thank you. El micrófono, Lisette, está apagado. Gracias. Eh, hello, Carla. You sent the report? Hello, Lisette. No, no, but the secretary has sent the information. Oh, okay. I have not sent because I forgot. Don't worry, the information was uh, be sent. Uh, that is amazing. Thanks so much, Carl. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, great. Thank you, girls. Uh, let's see. Uh, Carla, could you please choose another person? Um... Angela. Sorry, Estefania and Sabrina, right? Fatima. No, I'm, 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 oh, Fatima, sorry. Fatima. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Hello, Angela. What's the problem with your computer? Hello, Fatima. Well, I don't know. I have checked it everywhere and it won't turn on. That's bad. How about the connection? Have you checked all, all the cables are blue? Yes, I have. The technician has checked it. The maintenance team will replace the computer? I hope they can fix this problem. That's all the truth. Very good, girls. Uh, do me a favor and just repeat after me one word, which, which is already checked. Could you please repeat? Checked. 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 Mm -hmm. There you go. Checked. Checked. <risa> hagan el check y después hagan una T check y le agregan la T check 
Shit. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh -huh. There you go. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Um, Estefania, could you please choose another person? Sabrina. Um, who did you say, sorry? Sabrina. Oh, Sabrina. Okay, Sabrina. I thought you say Isabelina. <laughs> sorry. I heard that, you know. I was thinking about the name that was similar to Sabrina. <laughs> and then I couldn't, so I, that's what I asked you. So Sabrina and Jarixa. Okay. Hi, Jarixa. Hi, Sabrina. What is the matter? Well, the printer doesn't work in and I don't know what to do. Okay. I first thing I have done when the printer is not working is check check the cartridges. Well, I haven't done that. I will check it out. Check. check. I will look at it. Wow, okay. you're using new vocabulary. Good. <laughs> Great, girls. Jarixa, could you please choose another person? Ileana Carolina. Mm, Ileana Carolina already, well, she was a listener with Marcos uh, and Luis. Sorry, mm. another one? Who's missing? Mm. Who's missing, guys? Nobody? Nobody else is missing? Uh, Lisa, did you pass? Yes, I did. Yes, right. Well, we're done, right? We're done. Okay, sorry. Thank you, guys. Okay, guys, so uh, you did an amazing job. Wow. The more you practice speaking, guys, the more that you learn and the more that you know, okay? So very good. Uh, you already know about how to write down the present perfect. You already know how to express it orally, okay, which is good. So guys, now it's time to work to the page 33. Okay, we got a conversation there in the 33, another conversation, but this is about idioms, okay? So go to the page 33. This is the one, page 33. I will read it, guys, and then we will analyze or we will think about the bold words, okay? To try to guess what what do they mean okay so let me start reading just one second it's this is a conversation between um let's see um i believe it's jenny uh jen jenny who is calling to her boss to explain a problem okay jenny is calling to her boss so let's listen Listen to me, okay. Good morning, this is Mr. Reese. Hello, Mr. Reese, this is Johnny. I have a situation. Hi, Johnny, tell me, what's the matter? I'm not feeling well today. My stomach is killing me. I'm as sick as a dog. Mm, okay, I understand. Two days ago, I was feeling under the weather too. Oh, really? There's something going around. I hope you're feeling better. Oh yeah, I'm in tip top shape. Take it easy, Johnny. I hope to see you on Monday. Thanks a lot, Mr. Reese. Have a nice rest of the day. So as you can see and as you could listen guys, that was a conversation between a boss. The boss uh, is Mr. Reese and the, um, the employee is Johnny, okay? Johnny is calling him because he's feeling, he's not feeling good. So 
I mean, she she's not feeling good and she didn't go to work because she's not feeling good. So we got some words here. The, the first one is my stomach is killing me. Could you please repeat after me? My stomach is killing me. My stomach is killing me. My stomach is killing me. I'm as sick as a dog. I'm as sick as a dog. Under the weather. Under the weather. There's something going around. There's something going around. I, I'm sorry, I'm in tip top shape. I'm in tip top shape. Take it easy. Take it easy. Okay, uh, let me let me give you an example per per each bowl phrase, okay? Um guys, I let me go with the number one. Let me let me try to do this. All right. So I will go with this one. Uh sorry. Guys, I feel so bad right now. Like so bad. Um my stomach is killing me. Like it's killing me a lot. I don't want to eat. Um, so I'm so bad right now. My, my stomach is killing me and I, I don't want to eat. I have a big pain in my stomach. Okay. That's the first example. The number two, as sick as a dog. Okay. Let me give you an example. Oh my God, <laughs> let me see. Guys, right now I got a fever. Um, I am as sick as a dog. I don't want to go out. I'm just lying on the bed. And this is terrible, guys. So I don't, I don't want to go out, okay? I, I am as sick as a dog, all right? Second example. Third example. Um, hi, Sabrina. I'm calling you because you know what? I, I won't go to the party because I am, I am feeling under the weather. I don't feel good today. So I do apologize, but I won't go to the party. Okay. Sorry. All right. Let's go to the next one. There's something going around. Um, let me see, let me make it bigger. This, I want to see you. <clears throat> Guys, <clears throat> I can see like everyone is sad today. Like if you have been crying all day, what's going on? Why are you so sad? I am sad as well. Maybe because we can, um, we can say, we can, um, are done maybe right maybe because of this you're sad i believe there's something going around here and that's why all of us are sad right okay here you have the other example now let's go to the this one i'm in tip-top shape um you know what all my family all my family guys is sick right now everyone my father, my mother, my um, my sister, my grandmother, everyone is sick. But you know what? I'm not sick. I'm not sick, guys. I'm in tip top shape right now. Tip top shape. I I feel so good. Okay, I don't get sick, so I'm great. Let's go to the next one. Take it easy. Mm. let's see Lisette guys Lisette told me today that she's worried about the homework in the platform okay she's worried about the homework in the platform and she has been so stressful because of this um, she's so stressful 
that she doesn't want to eat. Just imagine, just because of the homework. So I told her to take it easy, okay? Take it easy, Lisette, okay? Everything will be fine. Take it easy, yes? The teacher is telling you to take it easy. <laughs> All right, so guys, here you have more examples about those idioms, okay? Idioms. So before to continue with this, uh, before to know what are the meaning of those idioms, guys, I just want to go down to the next page, which is the page number 34. Let's work on the page 34, guys. What did I do? One moment. Page 34, here you have. Okay, page 34. Okay, so I will ask Mabel, Mabel, are you there? Could you please help me to read the definition about idioms? I don't know if she's here. Um, or let's see. Luis, could you please help me to read the definition about idioms here? Uh, who's, how to use the idioms? Idioms are words or phrases, which mean something different from their literal meaning. For example, to be up in one's ears in work means to have a lot uh, of work. Very good, Luis, thank you. So yes, idioms guys are words or phrases which mean something different from, the, for, from their literal, literal meaning, okay? For example, to be up in one's ears in work. Guys, I am up. I am up in one's ear. That means that I have a lot of work, okay? I have a lot of work. So <laughs> you are you are up in one's ear, teacher. Try to translate that. Okay, guys, try to translate it. In the literal meaning, try to translate it. What what is the meaning if you translate it like that? ¿Cómo lo traducirían esto, guys? Literalmente. ¿Cómo? Estar hasta los oídos en el trabajo. Ajá. Entonces, guys, mi idioms, la, algunos de ellos, en la, en la parte literal, it doesn't make sense, ¿verdad? No, no es como que digamos que, ah, ok, tengo mucho trabajo. Pero es como en español. Nosotros a veces tenemos que palabras, frases, que lo decimos de algún modo y al final queremos decir otra cosa. Sí, pero son frases. Entonces, esos son los, los uh, idiomatic expressions en inglés. Esa es la coronilla. Es casi como lo que nosotros decimos. Es ah, la coronilla. Exacto, exacto. Entonces, algunos son así. Ustedes lo van a entender porque puede ser de que nosotros digamos algo parecido, pero algunos que no, no, ustedes se van a quedar como que no, esto nada que ver con lo que es, ¿verdad? Entonces, esos son los idioms. Y se utiliza bastante, guys, en, en la forma oral, al momento de hablar. Eh, muy, o sea, se ocupa bastante y son informales, ¿ok? Así que pues, be careful con this. Be careful con this. Be careful with this. Eh, tengan cuidado con eso. Pero sí, le, no es que no puedan ocupar un idioma, ¿verdad? De repente en, en su trabajo, claro que sí lo pueden ocupar. Pero más que todo, ustedes lo van a escuchar más que todo en el informal English, ¿verdad? Right? Conocen con su familia, amigos, en la calle. Ustedes lo van a escuchar mucho. Pero sí, native speakers. They use uh, idioms a lot, okay? Idioms a lot. So, si escuchan a un native speaker, guys, ustedes le van a entender si han estudiado más, más o menos algunos idioms, okay? So, it's 
that's an important part of English to learn idioms, all right? So we get this exercise, guys, and we will do it together. Actually, it is, well, they are, well, it is one exercise, actually. We have eight idioms here. As sick as a dog, under the weather, there's something going around, my stomach is killing me, take it easy, can afford to, that's a new one, because we don't have that one in the previous example. Calling sick, we don't have that one, and tip top shape, you have it. So do me a favor, guys, and try to match the meaning of the, of the idioms in the part number five. Let me make it um, smaller and we will do it together, okay? Because of the time. So we have eight meanings here, okay? And here we have eight idioms. We need to match them, okay? We will write it down here, the idiom that it is. So let's see, we will do it together, guys. What do you think about my stomach hearts badly? What is the, uh, I mean, what is the, this is the meaning, this is the meaning. So what do you think is the idiom for this meaning? My stomach is killing me. My stomach is killing me, that's right. Okay, my stomach is killing me. So we will put it here, number four. Okay, guys, what about to be sick? To be very sick, what, what do you think it is? A sick as a dog, under the weather too, there's something going around, etc. cetera. What, what do you think that is, is, is the right one? one? Number one, a sick as a dog? I'm sick. Mm -hmm. A sick as a dog, very good. What about the number three, to relax or to rest? What do you think that is the right one? Take it easy. Take it easy, right? <laughs> Lisa, take it easy. All right, number four and number five, take it easy. Okay, what about not feeling well, guys? What do you think that is the right one there? Not feeling well? Mm -hmm. Under the weather, there's something going around. Can't afford to call in sick, tip top shape. <clears throat> Let's scroll up. Let's scroll up and look for this. Uh, the, it says, uh, okay, I understand two days ago, I was feeling under the weather too. This is the context. I'm not feeling well today. My stomach is killing me. I am sick as a dog. Okay, I understand two days ago, I was feeling under the weather too. Oh, really? There's something going on, going around, sorry. I hope you're, you're feeling better. Oh yeah, I'm in tip top shape. Take it easy, Gianni. I have to see you on Monday. So what is the meaning of, I mean, what is the idiom for the meaning, for this meaning, not feeling well? Two, three, six, seven, or eight, guys? Seven, calling sick. Calling sick? Mm, what do you think, guys? Close, close. Mm -hmm. Is that two? Under the weather too? Under the weather too. Great. Uh huh. It's under the weather. Not feeling good, guys. Is you don't. Uh, I mean, whenever you said I'm, I am under the weather. That means not feeling good. Okay. I am under the weather. Not feeling good. So uh, let me see. In great condition. What what about that one? In great in great condition. Mm -hmm. In great condition, guys. Here you have. So in great condition might be. Uh, there's something going around, can't afford to, cold in sick, tip top shape. shape. 
tick tock tip top shake right very good okay so it's number eight what about don't have time don't have time to Don't have time to? Calling sick, can't afford to, there's something going around. What is the right one, guys? Can afford to? Can afford to, good. Can afford to, like you can afford to go to the party, you can afford to go to the meeting, you can afford to go to, the, to your work, okay? No alcanzo a llegar, right? Okay, uh, number seven. Many people have the same thing. There's hmm. something going around. There is something going around. Great. And the other one calling sick, right? So three and seven. Three and seven. Very good, guys. Okay, so let's listen. One moment. I want you to please to practice those idioms because I want you to please to learn them, okay? And practice it. So, as sick as a dog, as sick as a dog, guys, means that you are very sick, okay? I am as sick as a dog or I feel as sick as a dog. Let me see the example here. I am as sick as a dog, okay? Ocupan el verb to be. I am as sick as a dog. That means that you are very sick. Está muy, muy enfermo. Repeat after me. I am as sick as a dog. I am as sick, I am as sick as, as a dog. dog. Very good. Number two means, guys, you are not feeling well. No se está sintiendo bien. I, I am under the weather. El tú es también, ahí está mal. So, I am under the weather. Repeat that for me. I am under the weather. I can go to the school. Um, Let's repeat. I am under the weather. I can go to the school. Guys, come on, don't get us leave. <laughs> Once again, I am under the weather. I can go to the school. I am under the weather. I can go to the school. Go to the school. Go to the school. Very good. There's something going around. Es que como que muchas personas le está pasando lo mismo, ¿verdad? Como que que hay algo, ¿verdad? Que nos está pasando todos, algo así. So, you said, mm, there's something going around here. Solamente le pongo el here, right? There is something going around. Repeat after me. There is something going around. So, my stomach is killing me. It is that it's hurting me a lot. Me está doliendo mucho. My stomach is killing me. Okay? My stomach my is stomach killing me. Killing me. Killing me. Um, don't worry, take it easy. Don't worry, take, don't it, worry, easy. take it easy. Okay, to relax. Okay, relajar, relájense, okay. Can afford to, no puede, no alcanza a, a hacer algo. Uh, for example, I can afford to go to the meeting. I can afford to go to the meeting. Repeat after me. Can afford can afford and the number six, uh, let me see, seven, sorry. Number seven is to phone to office to say you're sick. Okay. I call in sick. I call in sick yesterday. I call in sick yesterday. I call in sick yesterday. And tip top shape, usted está, eh, oh my God, se me olvidó la palabra en Spanish. En buena forma, okay? Tip top shape means que está usted en buena forma. So I am in tip top shape, teacher. I don't get feel, I don't get sick. Tip top shape. Tip top shape. 
Okay, very good. Guys, questions about those idioms? Preguntas? No? No. No questions? Okay. So let me, uh, well, um, yes, let me go here. All right, now guys, it's time to practice in. Mm, one moment, I, I got a mistake here because this is not a reading. Sorry, just one moment. We have guys, oh yes, listen, uh-huh, here, sorry. Uh, it was another, another slide. Okay, so we have a listening practice, okay? So be ready with your with your ears, okay? Pay attention, guys. Concentrate yourselves, okay? We have a listening practice. Listen to an audio about calling sick and learn vocabulary, okay? Please listen and try to, first, we will listen just to understand. Ok, lo vamos a escuchar solo para entender y la segunda vez se lo voy a poner para que ustedes vayan copiando el vocabulario que vayan aprendiendo en el listening, ok. So pay attention con, con esto y aprendan lo más que puedan, ok. I will play this audio for you. Pay attention, guys. One moment. I just want to make sure, ok. So, solamente me dejan saber, guys, si, si, van, si van escuchando. Si escuchan. Welcome to English Pod. My name Do you hear that? Yes? Yes, teacher. Okay, great. Let me Very see. useful lesson. Being sick. Yeah. Um, we're going to. Sorry. Hello, English. All right. Let me just get the volume up. All right. And pay attention, we'll listen to this twice. The first time, just to listen. Listen and understand. And the second time, guys, I will play just two twice, not three times because of the time. So the first time will be just to listen and understand. Second time will be just for you to copy or to get all vocabulary, all vocabulary that you can. Porque este es el propósito, aprender vocabulario y ese eh, vocabulario aplicarlo en un contexto real. So, please pay attention, guys. Hello, English learners. Welcome to English Pod. My name is Marco. And I'm Erica. And today we're going to be bringing you a very useful lesson about being sick. Yeah, um, we're going to learn um, how to tell your boss that you can't go to work because you're sick. Exactly. This is really important because we all get sick and sometimes you just can't go to work. Yes. Or maybe sometimes you just don't want to exactly, go to work. Exactly. Maybe yeah. you're lying. Yeah. But we're going to be teaching you how to do it anyway. So before we start with our dialogue, let's take a look at vocabulary preview. Vocabulary preview. In this vocabulary preview, we have two words for you. Uh, the first one is quite ill. Quite ill. Quite ill. So quite ill. Very sick. Very sick. Quite mm -hmm. is a synonym of very. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And ill. Sick. Sick. Yep. So they both mean the same thing. No difference. No difference at all. I just think uh, ill is more common in British English. Mm, exactly. All right. Let's take a look at our second word. Flu. The flu. The flu. The flu. So the flu is a virus. Yeah. It's a sickness. Okay. And mm -hmm. uh, it's very similar to a cold. Yes, but just a lot worse. A lot worse. So it's stronger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's also called influenza. Influenza. Uh -huh. Exactly. So the flu. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's listen to our dialogue. What's going to happen here today? Well, we're going to listen as Julie calls her boss to tell him she's sick. All right. But is she really sick? I don't know. Let's find out. Hi, Daniel. Julie here. <coughs> oh, hi, Julie. How are you? Actually, I'm feeling quite ill today. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What's wrong? I think I'm coming down with the flu. I have a headache, uh, a sore throat, <clears> throat> a runny nose, 
and I'm feeling slightly feverish. I see. So you're calling in sick. Yes. I was hoping to take the day off uh, to recover. Okay, then. Try and get some rest. All right, so Julie didn't really seem to be sick, huh? Yeah, I, I don't know. That, that cough was just a little <laughs> too much. It seemed like she was acting. Yeah. All right, so let's take a look at some of this vocabulary in language takeaway. Language takeaway. We have five words for you here, and these are all great words to describe a sickness, right? Mm -hmm. All right, the first one, headache. 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 So when you have a headache, you have a sore head, right? Right, your head hurts. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty simple. Yep. You have a headache. It's the way you feel after um, being at the bar too late. Yeah, when you yeah. drink too much, you yeah. get a headache. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at our next word. Sore throat. Sore throat. Sore throat. Sore throat. So basically, we have two words here. Let's look at the first one, sore. Hurting. It hurts, right? Yep. And your throat is... Well, it, you know, it's the part right here, right? The back... Oh, you can't see me. <laughs> well, it's the part um, at the back of your mouth that goes down to your stomach. All right. That's your throat. Yeah. So you use your throat to swallow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, we can use the word sore with different body parts, right? Yeah. Like um, a sore back. A sore back, right? Or maybe you were playing tennis all weekend, so you have a sore arm. Uh-huh. Or even a sore neck. Right. Mm -hmm. So the word sore. Let's take a look at our third word. Runny nose. Runny nose. Runny nose. Runny nose. This is a very strange word. I know. But it doesn't mean that your nose is running, right? No, but okay. Um, it, no, but when you have a runny nose, um, there's lots of water coming out of your nose, right? Right. So it's interesting, though, because when you run... You go fast, right? <laughs> so a lot of water is... <laughs> Coming fast out of your nose. Out of your nose. Runny nose. Yeah. Okay. Our fourth word today, slightly feverish. Slightly feverish. Slightly feverish. Slightly feverish. So again, slightly is... A little bit. A little bit, mm -hmm. right? A little bit and feverish. Well, let's break this word down. Um, we know fever, right? Mm -hmm. um, so when, you're, when your body is very, very hot because right. you're sick. So feverish is the feeling of your body being very, very hot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have a high temperature. It's not that you have a high temperature, but you feel like you have a high temperature. Okay, so slightly feverish. Mm -hmm. And our last word, to recover. 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 So this means to get better, right? Exactly. Can you only use it when you're sick? So when you recover, you get better and you rest. So maybe you can say, um, I was so busy this week. I need to recover this weekend. Okay. So yeah, if you feel tired yeah. or you feel sick, you can recover. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's listen to our dialogue again. And we can listen to these words that we've just talked about. Hello, Daniel speaking. How may I help you? Hi, Daniel. Julie here. <coughs> oh, hi, Julie. How are you? Actually, I'm feeling quite ill today. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What's wrong? Uh, I think I'm coming down with the flu. I have uh, a sore throat, <clears throat> a runny nose, and I'm feeling slightly feverish. I see. So you're calling in sick. Yes. I was hoping to take the day off uh, to recover. Okay, then. Try and get some rest. Okay, guys, we will end it up here and we will listen again. That's the second time. I will ask you this vocabulary later on, okay? So be ready, guys. Now it's time for you to write down or to copy the new vocabulary that you're learning in this audio, okay? So let's play once again. Yeah, um, we're going to learn um, how to tell your boss that you can't go to work because you're sick. Exactly, this is really important because we all get sick and sometimes you just 
can't go to work. Yes. Or maybe sometimes you just don't want to you go to work. Exactly. Maybe yeah. you're lying. Yeah. But we're going to be teaching you how to do it anyway. So before we start with our dialogue, let's take a look at vocabulary preview. Vocabulary preview. In this vocabulary preview, we have two words for you.、Uh, the first one is quite ill. Quite ill. Quite ill. So, quite ill. Very sick. Very sick. Quite、mm-hmm. is a synonym of very. Exactly. Okay.、Yeah. And ill. Sick. Sick. Yep. So, they both mean the same thing. No difference. No difference at all. I just think、uh, ill is more common in British English.、Mm, exactly. All right. Let's take a look at our second word flu. The flu. The flu. The flu. So, the flu is a virus. Yeah, it's a sickness. Okay. And、mm-hmm. uh, it's very similar to a cold. Yes, but just a lot worse. A lot worse. So it's stronger. Yeah, yeah.、Um, it's also called influenza. Influenza,、uh-huh. exactly. So the flu.、Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's listen to our dialogue. What's going to happen here today? Well, we're going to listen as Julie calls her boss to tell him she's sick. All right, but is she really sick? I don't know. Let's find out. Hi, Daniel. Julie here. <coughs>、oh, hi, Julie. How are you? Actually, I'm feeling quite ill today. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What's wrong? I, I think I'm coming down with the flu. I have a headache,、uh, a sore throat, <clears throat> a runny nose, and I'm feeling slightly feverish. I see. So you're calling in sick? Yes. I was hoping to take the day off、uh, to recover. Okay, then. Try and get some rest. All right, so Julie didn't really seem to be sick, huh? Yeah, I, I don't know. That, that cough was just a little <laughs> too much. It seemed like she was acting. Yeah. All right, so let's take a look at some of this vocabulary in language takeaway. Language takeaway. We have five words for you here, and these are all great words to describe a sickness, right?、Mm-hmm. All right, the first one headache. 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 So when you have a headache, you have a sore head, right? Right, your head hurts.、Mm-hmm. So it's pretty simple. Yep. You have a headache. It's the way you feel after、um, being at the bar too late. Yeah, when you yeah. drink too much,、yeah. you get a headache. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at our next word sore throat. Sore throat. Sore throat. Sore throat. So basically, we have two words here. Let's look at the first one sore. Hurting. It hurts, right?、Yep. And your throat is. Well, it, you know, it's the part right here where the bat. Oh, you can't see me. <laughs> well, it's the part、um, at the back of your mouth that goes down to your stomach. All right, that's your throat. Yeah. So you use your throat to swallow. Mm hmm. Okay. Now we can use the word sore with different body parts, right? Yeah. Like、um, a sore back. A sore back, right? Or maybe you were playing tennis all weekend, so you have a sore arm. Uh huh. Or even a sore neck. Right. Mm hmm. So the word sore. Let's take a look at our third word. Runny nose. Runny nose. Runny nose. Runny nose. This is a very strange word. I know. But it doesn't mean that your nose is running, right? No, but okay.、Um, it, no, but when you have a runny nose,、um, there's lots of water coming out of your nose, right? Right. So it's interesting, though, because when you run, you go fast, right? <laughs> so a lot of water <laughs> is coming fast out of your nose. Out of your nose. Runny nose. Yeah. Okay, our fourth word today slightly feverish. Slightly feverish. Slightly feverish. Slightly feverish. So, again, slightly is. A little bit. A little bit,、mm-hmm. right? A little bit and feverish. Well, let's break this word down.、Um, we know fever, right?、Mm-hmm. Um, so, when, when your body is very, very hot because、right. you're sick. So, feverish is the feeling of your body being very, very hot.、Mm-hmm. Okay, so you have a high temperature. It's not that you have a high temperature, but you feel like you have a high temperature. Okay, so slightly feverish.、Mm-hmm. And our last word to recover. 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 
So this means to get better, right? Exactly. Can you only use it when you're sick? So when you recover, you get better and you rest. So maybe you can say, um, "I was so busy this week. I need to recover this weekend." Okay. So yeah, if you feel tired yeah. and feel sick, you can recover. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's listen to our dialogue again, and we can listen to these words that we've just talked about. Hello, Daniel speaking. How may I help you? Hi, Daniel. Julie here. <coughs> oh, hi, Julie. How are you? Actually, I'm feeling quite ill today. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What's wrong? Uh, I think I'm coming down with the flu. I have a headache, uh, a sore throat, <clears throat> a runny nose, and I'm feeling slightly feverish. I see. So you're calling in sick. Yes. I was hoping to take the day off、uh, to recover. Okay then, try and get some rest. In this dialogue, we listen to some really interesting phrases of how. Hello, guys. Okay, so、um, I believe that we learn a lot from the audio. All right, and now it's time for me to ask you some questions about the new vocabulary that you heard. So basically, that was a conversation, right? In which the employee is not—I mean, doesn't want to go to work. So because she doesn't、uh, want to go to work, she's saying that she's sick, right? And she is providing some symptoms about being sick. All right. So I want to ask you guys, what does it mean whenever I say I'm quite ill? Quite ill. What does it mean? Quite ill. Very very sick. It's very sick, right? Very sick. Quite ill. It's not very very, very but it's sick, like being sick.、Mm -hmm. By、um, by the way. What is the difference between ill and between sick? They say, they say like, where do they use the word ill? Hmm.、Mm -hmm. Well, in the audio, they say the ill, and、uh, they use it in the British, British. English, okay. That's a difference. What is the difference of flu, guys? Flu is a virus. What is the meaning? Sorry, it's a virus. Okay. All right, it's a virus. What kind of virus is it? Something like influenza. Uh huh. It's influenza. Is. Yes. Like that, right? And whenever you have runny nose, okay, la gripecita. Okay, what about headache? Headache. What is the meaning of headache? When sore your head. Oh, great! That's sore of your head, right? Headache. Great. What about sore? Whenever you use the word sore, what does it mean? Sore. Sore. With different parts of body. Ah, you can use it with different part of your body, but what is the meaning of sore? Dolor. There you go. Ah,、uh、it's -huh. pain. So, what is the meaning of sore? Sore. Ah,、uh, sore throat. What's the meaning of sore throat? Dolor de garganta. Very good. What about sore neck? Sore neck. Sore neck. Where There you? you go. Sore, sore arm. Dolor de bras. Sore back. I have a sore back. Y ahí también podemos decir backache. No, you say no. backache or you say sore back. Any of it. Uh huh. What about、so、Ronnie? Runny nose, guys. What is the meaning of runny no nose? Mocoso. <laughs> Mocosera. Okay. All right. What about being a slightly feverish? What is the meaning of this? 
very, uh, very, very, very hot. Uh huh. But it's the because they, do you have temperature or do you feel that you have it, temperature? Do you feel? You feel. You feel. You feel, <laughs> you feel but, right. There is a big difference of having temperature or feeling that you have temperature. You said it's slightly feverish. Okay, me siento poco que. Como dice uno, poco. I don't want to say that word because it's. Pero como un poco. Ah. Irritado, irritado. Irritado, there you go. Very good. Okay, what about um, recover? What does it mean, recover? And you get better. Uh-huh, to rest and to get better. And cough, what is the mean of cough? Dos. There you go, uh-huh. That was that real cough, right? The one that is, what the, the one that was on the cold. That wasn't real. <laughs> it was like that. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was. <laughs> and at the end, he, she, I mean, the bus hung up on her, right? Le colgó y le dijo, okay, que se sienta mejor. Le dijo. Ni modo, pa' que anda mintiendo, ¿verdad? <laughs> bueno. Una compañera que mintió sobre irse, estaba enferma, se fue al puerto. Y en el puerto comió concha y se enfermó de verdad. Oh my God. No me mataba la risa ese día. Puro her. No, pero no. A ti. Se ríe del That's dolor. Karma, right? De la mentira. Me río de la mentira. Mm -hmm. Ay, no. Lo que pidió con mentira pidió permiso para irse a descansar. Se fue a la playa y allá se enfermó. Ay, el lunes. No. Le tocó faltar de verdad, porque de verdad se enferma. Ni modo, ahí sí tuvo que, ¿verdad? Bueno, pero le salió bien, ¿verdad? <ríe> o sea, le salió bien con, eh, con demostrar que al final sí estaba enferma. Para algunos, porque los que sabían, ya sabían de que no era mentira, ¿verdad? Okay, guys. So uh, we will continue practicing about the idioms. Okay, vamos a continuar practicando los idioms. Ahora aprendimos también vocabulario. Okay, how to call in sick. So we will continue practicing this tomorrow, and I believe on Thursday because we have the part two of idioms. So I will go through the attendance list right now, guys. And just Marielos, don't don't go. Okay. So let me go through the attendance list. Ileana Carolina Calerón Cisneros. Present teacher. Yuri Alexandra Flores Parada. Jose Nelson Ruiz Moreno. Surma Yerixa Oliva Córdoba. Present. Sabrina Lizeth García Orellana. Present. Marta Lidia Godínez. Present teacher. Thank you. Marielo Janet Cornejo Arazo. Marcos Antonio Melgar Pérez. Present teacher. Marcos Amil Carmancía. Present teacher. I'm just looking. Okay. Sorry, just one moment. Luis Ernesto Gómez García. Present teacher. Lizette del Carmen Hernández Mismi. Present teacher. Linda Magali García Montoya. Kevin Alexander Aguilar Bonilla. Kenny Lizette Cuellar de Barrientos. Present teacher. Carla Elizabeth Escobar Esquivel. Present. Julio César Ramírez. Present teacher. Uh, Jonathan Alexander González Torres. Present teacher. Jessica del Carmen Vázquez Vázquez. Present. Jaime Antonio Velar Cortés. Fátima Denise Aguilar Márquez. Estela Mabel Oriana del Cid. Present teacher. Cristian José teacher. López Pérez. Present. Ángela Estefanía Marroquín Martínez. Present teacher. 
Okay, just one moment, guys. Deme nomás un segundito por acá. Okay, guys, so thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for joining. See you tomorrow and I hope you have a wonderful uh, rest, okay? Bye-bye, guys. Take thank care. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye, teacher. Bye, take care. Hola, hola, hola. ¿Qué tal? Hola. ¿Cómo está, Marielos? Bien, bien. Bien. El último tema fue interesante. Porque hay muchas palabras de que esto se pueden inventar. ¿sí? Porque, bueno, nosotros también inventamos cuando queremos decir algo. Ajá, ¿sí? es cierto. ¿Y qué le pareció? Todo bien. ¿Qué le pareció la clase del día de ahora? Bien, bien. Todavía eh, fue un reto, lo del listening. Ah, lo del listening. Sí, sí, está bien. Bueno, estaba largo. Ya nos habíamos acostumbrado a esta charla. ¿Verdad? Sí, sí. créame que a veces para mí es algo difícil traer el listening porque eh, no, es, no es algo que, que pudiéramos hacerlo así con total verdad libertad por el hecho de que no podemos traer materiales de terceros, pero ese listening lo encontré, eh, la verdad es que es un listening que, que el mismo programa nos ha sugerido, así que pues decidimos traérselo porque la verdad es que sí tenemos que tener esa parte auditiva, ¿verdad? Y no solamente de parte mía, pues porque al final yo quisiera ser nativa, pero no, entonces tienen que escuchar más a los nativos para que escuchen más eh, la forma de hablar de ellos, la entonación, la... la eh, eh, la pronunciación, etcétera, ¿verdad? Sí, es bastante diferente. Sí. Sí. Yo más bien quizás le iba a preguntar, como digamos, yo me puse así como la meta de aprenderme los verbos. ¿Los Pero, verbos? No, ajá, los verbos. Eh, los verbos, no sé todo. Sí, porque estaba buscando como una base para poder comprender varias cosas y yo creo que de los verbos depende bastante. Sí, y ha visto la lista de verbos que he mandado. Eso le pudiera ayudar bastante. Sí, 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 incluso. Sí, pero quizás no, no la idea no es tanto aprendérselo, sino que como comprenderlo. Quizás sí aprenderme la base, pero ya saber cómo pasarlo a pasado o a presente. Ah, entiendo. Fíjese que ahí realmente los tiempos que hemos visto por el momento han sido que pasado, presente, hemos visto el presente continuous, el pasado continuous, el present perfect que estamos viendo ahorita. Entonces, eh, es como el hecho de, de encontrar una, de, de, perdón, de manejar las fórmulas que yo le brindo, al menos anotarla, ¿verdad? Déjeme ver, voy a intentar compartir este widescreen. No sé si lo puede ver. Eh, una pantalla como blanquita. Uh -huh. Muy bien. Entonces, por ejemplo, yo tengo un verbo y el verbo es... Déjeme ver si... Si lo estoy utilizando primera vez este whiteboard. Déjeme ver. 
el verbo que yo quiero como conjugar, que es lo que usted me, me comenta, que cómo conjugar los verbos, ¿verdad? El verbo que queremos conjugar es el verbo write, ¿verdad? Que es escribir. Entonces, ¿cómo conjugaríamos este verbo, verdad? Lo vamos a hacer con los tiempos que hemos visto. Deme un segundo. Uy, está raro. Déjeme ver. No creo que abrir otro cuadrito. Vale. Entonces tenemos, por ejemplo, que el, el present, simple present, ¿verdad? Simple present. Entonces, como le digo, ahí básicamente de tener tal vez, Marielos, un, un cuadrito, una, una imagen o una paginita donde usted tenga anotadas tonga, todas las fórmulas, ¿verdad? De, de los tiempos. Entonces, por ejemplo, digamos que queremos nosotros poner en, en simple present el right. Entonces, el simple present, déjeme ver. Uy, que me está costando con este whiteboard. Quizás por la primera vez, vaya. El simple present, por ejemplo, nosotros decimos... No, permítame que mejor lo voy a hacer en un... No, por ejemplo. Ajá, ya me acostumbré. Permítame. Vamos a abrir la última. Ya le comparto. Close. Vale, ahora sí. Aquí está, miren. Bye. Entonces, como por ejemplo, tenemos el, el verbo write, ¿verdad? El write ahorita está en base forma. Base forma, no está conjugado. Es cuando, cuando no está conjugado, a, no está conjugado en verbo. Entonces, digamos que lo queremos poner a simple present. Si yo lo quiero poner en simple present, tengo que saber la fórmula para preso, simple present, sorry, o saber cómo nosotros creamos una oración con simple present. Entonces, como en toda, y eso es esencial, lo esencial de cada oración siempre va a ser sujeto, verbo y predicado. ¿verdad? Subject plus verb plus complement. Lo esencial. Todo eso siempre lo va a haber una oración afirmativa. ¿verdad? Entonces vamos a hacerlo con, con afirmativo porque es como lo más, lo más básico. Entonces, si estamos nosotros conjugando simple present, ¿verdad? Entonces, por ejemplo, acá, right. Voy a elegir Marielos, ¿verdad? Tercera persona. Marielos, right. Como estamos hablando de, de tercera persona, le agrego la S. Es una de las reglas de Simple Present. Marielos writes a poem. ¿Sí? Y ahí está. Tenemos subject, verb, and complement. Pero lo que va a ser diferente acá va a ser el verbo. ¿Cómo estamos conjugando el verbo? Porque estamos hablando de Simple Present. Entonces, ¿qué pasa si yo lo quiero hacer en past, verdad? Simple past. En simple past, nosotros vamos a decirlo en pasado. ¿Y cuál es el pasado de, de right? Ahí es donde tenemos que saber los verbos, ¿verdad? Pero vamos a ponerlo. Marielos wrote a poem. Entonces, si se fija, siempre nosotros repetimos la misma estructura o el mismo fórmula, por así decirlo. Sujeto, verbo y, pre, y pre, subject, verbo and complement para afirmary, ¿verdad? Siempre. Lo que va a ser la diferencia es el verbo que va a ser el verbo conjugado. Eso es lo que va a ser la diferencia. Pero por lo demás, todo va a ser casi que la misma estructura, ¿verdad? Entonces, digamos, estamos en pasado. ¿Cuál otro hemos visto? Simple present, simple past. Eh, 
present continuous, el presente continuous, present continuous. Vaya, vale, present continuous. Marielos. Aquí utilizamos el verbo to be más el ing, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. ¿Qué es la diferencia de eso? Entonces, Marielos is writing a poem. Entonces, como le digo, lo que va cambiando aquí, más que todo es el verbo, es cuál es la fórmula del verbo. Aquí ya sabemos que es base forma, pero a las terceras personas le agregamos las heces. En simple paso, uh -huh. usted se vira la tablita que yo les he mandado en la segunda columna. Y el present continuous lleva ver to be más ing en el verbo. Is writing a poem. Ahora, ¿qué pasa si yo lo quiero pasar para pasado continuo? No sé si hemos visto, creo que si hemos visto o no hemos visto ese tiempo. No, ¿verdad? Todavía no. Va, entonces lo vamos a hacer en... Simple presence. Oh, is go, going to, si lo hemos visto. Going to. Ajá, going to, ese sí lo hemos visto, entonces, vaya, entonces lo que voy a hacer aquí es aplicar lo que nos enseñaron en la clase, la, la, la estructura o la fórmula del going to, y cuál era, estructura, cuál era la estructura o la fórmula de él, si no me recuerdo, lo buscamos, o lo buscamos en internet o en las clases que, que dieron, ¿verdad? La estructura o en la fórmula, entonces usted dice, Marielos... Aquí en el is going to ocupamos el verb to be y el luego el going to. Entonces, Marielos is going to, y ahí el verbo, write a poem. ¿Verdad? ¿Y cuál va a ser aquí para present perfect? Que es el que ya aprendimos. Y de hecho, podemos sacar también acá el pasivo. ¿Se acuerda de la voz pasiva? También podemos sacar la voz pasiva aquí. Que de hecho lo hicimos en presente. Passive voice lo vamos a poner. Passive voice. Yo me acuerdo que el passive voice era verb to be más past participio. El verbo era participio, la tercera columna. Entonces aquí ya lo hago diferente. Porque es passive voice. Entonces dice a poem is... Written, esto es en voz pasiva, eh, ver to be más past participle. Is written by Marielos. O solamente puedo decir a poem is written. Fue una de las clases difíciles. Creo que esa fue una de las clases sí, difíciles. Sí, la verdad es que fue no, una de las clases la difíciles. La, la apoyo con eso. ¿eh? Entonces lo que queremos resaltar fue, tal vez no quién lo hizo, sino qué se hizo. Este es el passive voice. Entonces, a, a poem is written. Entonces, se fija y lo que va cambiando es el verbo, ¿verdad? Sí. Los verbos, la, la, la frase eh, verbal. ¿Y qué pasa si ahí quiero hacer uno este, presente perfecto? Present perfect, ¿verdad? Se lo voy a dejar. Present perfect. Ok, con present perfect, entonces sería Marielos, right? Marielos has, y aquí vamos con el pasivo, con el, sorry, past participle, written, has written a poem. Ok, Marielos has written a poem. Entonces, acá está, mire, si usted se fija, lo mismo estamos siguiendo. Subject, verb, and eh, complement. Lo que va a ser la diferencia es el verbo, cómo lo estamos conjugando. ¿Y dónde vamos a ver eso? ¿Cómo se está conjugando el verbo? En las fórmulas que se han brindado, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. En las clases. Entonces, esas son las fórmulas. Sabemos que el simple present en las terceras personas lleva la S, pero luego solamente va la base forma. El simple past con el pasado, verbo en pasado, presente continuo, verb to be más ING. Going to, going to sería el, el verb to be más going to y luego el verbo. El is written lleva verb to be y luego lleva eh, 
verbo participio. Y en present perfect, que es el que estamos viendo, es lleva el has o el have y luego va el participio. Entonces todo depende de la estructura y de qué tiempo usted lo está haciendo. Uy, ya no la escuché, María Luz, dígame. Ah, no, que en las últimas sí juega el papel importante en verbo en participio. Sí, exacto. Entonces, básicamente es la manera como usted lo va a ir este, conjugando, ¿verdad? Un verbo. Y así va a ser con muchos verbos. Y estos son algunas, algunos tiempos, ¿verdad? Van a haber otros tiempos. que el hay... pasado también. Uh -huh. El pasado, el pasado continuo, nos hace falta. Nos hace falta algunos, la verdad, hemos visto los suficientes, pero sí. Eh, va a depender de la estructura que, que aprendamos en la clase y si en algún momento usted tiene duda de cuál es la fórmula, usted la puede buscar en Google, puede poner Passive Voice Structure, eh, Present Perfect Structure, Simple Present Structure y ahí le aparece la estructura de cómo está formada, ¿verdad? Entonces usted ya sabe cuál es el, 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 el Paz participio, ya sabe cuál es el simple, el, los verbos en pasado, los verbos regulares, irregulares, entonces el verb to be, que son como las bases que íbamos aprendiendo al principio, ¿verdad? Para allá después ya venir a estos tipos de, 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 de temas y esos tipos de tiempo, ¿verdad? Entonces, creo que con eso, eso le va a ayudar, el hecho de tener tal vez las fórmulas de los, de los tiempos. De las, la, perdón, las estructuras o las fórmulas de cada tiempo, presente, continuo, simple past, y saber que siempre hay una regla, subject, verb, and complement, a, ver, a menos, perdón, que estamos hablando de los imperativos que no tienen sujeto, ¿verdad? Que solo dice, bring the, uh, I mean, go to your table, um, come on, etc. Eso no tienen sujeto. Entonces... Eso más que todo. Y si hablamos de los modal verbs, de los verbos modales, usted sabe que ahí va el, el should, el can, el could, ¿verdad? Y esos también tienen su propia estructura, ¿sí? Entonces, ahí más que todo estamos hablando de estructuras eh, que tenemos que tener en cuenta. Si usted tiene la, la estructura, la forma de cada uno de ellos, como ya tiene la base, usted lo va a poder crear, ¿verdad? No sé si eso le ayuda un poquito más, Mariela. No, sí, sí, me motiva más que todo agarrar más verbos y pasarlas así. Ajá, eso le va a ayudar un montón el hecho de practicarlos, porque lo que usted está haciendo es poniendo en práctica lo que usted ha visto en todos los cursos, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Y hasta sí. el momento eso es lo que le, le, le cuesta, o hay algo más que, que le está costando o le podría ayudar. Ay, que siento que todo. <risa> no, es que en el sentido que yo sigo pensando que me hace falta mucho, mucha base, pero eso es más que todo. De que... Ah, pero qué bueno que se pudo resolver ahorita y como, como usted dice, lo que tenemos que hacer ahorita es practicar, ¿verdad? Practicar y, y de igual manera si usted en algún momento necesita que, que recordar algo, tiene dudas, siempre pregúnteme, ¿verdad? Y vamos a estar a la orden y continuemos participando también en clases porque créanme que eso es lo que, lo que ahorita nos mantiene, pues, porque cuando uno se descontinúa de las clases o no sigue o una clase ya no siguió, uno se desmotiva y, y si no participa, la verdad es que al final no está muy involucrada en la clase y no aprende mucho. Entre más participe, más aprende uno, ¿verdad? Y eso se ha visto en muchos de los casos de la clase, fíjense, que a veces ya no me participan y yo siempre les digo, vaya, no me está participando. Y, y yo lo veo más callado, menos, menos está aprendiendo. Y empiezo otra vez a, a participar y ya veo yo que va para arriba. Entonces eso ayuda mucho por el hecho de que no tenemos tiempo en el día, estamos en el trabajo, estamos en, con la familia y no tenemos tiempo de dedicarle tal vez al inglés, ¿verdad? Entonces este es el momento, esas dos horas, ¿verdad? Hay que aprovecharlas. Entonces eso también yo siempre se lo digo a todos que eso les va a ayudar un montón y no tener miedo a participar ni a cometer errores. Creo que hasta este módulo yo los estoy empezando a corregir con las pronunciaciones, ¿verdad? Más que todo, eh, ¿Por qué? Porque siempre tiene que haber correcciones para que ustedes sepan qué es, qué es lo que están haciendo bien, qué están haciendo mal para que vayan aprendiendo. Sí, correcto. Pero al, ajá, pero al principio yo quería que ustedes 
eh, ustedes se, se involucraran, que no sintieran pena, que no, que no se detuvieran, ¿verdad? Participar, porque es que al principio todos tenemos errores y de eso se va aprendiendo. Pero al principio quería que ustedes de verdad hablaran, 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 ¿verdad? Y ahora sí, yo ya lo voy corrigiendo un poquito más. Por lo mismo, ¿verdad? Aprendizaje. Porque créame que yo también he sido maestra, eh, perdón, estudiante y, y la verdad es de que a veces cuando uno va empezando y uno se va equivocando a la primera y le dicen no, o lo corrigen de inmediato, no, uno lo, lo cortan y a veces uno se dice no, ya no, no puedo, dice uno. Entonces hay muchas desventajas y ventajas de corregir al principio, siento yo. La verdad es que con ustedes me ha ayudado bastante el hecho de no corregirlas a la primera porque no les quiero quitar las alas y no, siento yo que no se las quité, ¿verdad? Pero ya entre más vayamos avanzando, ustedes, de hecho ustedes mismos se van dando cuenta de los errores y lo corrigen y si no, yo se los voy diciendo, ¿verdad? Pero ya es con la confianza esa de no temer al hablar, ¿verdad? Entonces eso... Pero como le digo, María Luz, cualquier cosa estamos a la orden. Si usted tiene alguna pregunta o algo más en lo cual pueda ayudarla, dígame y yo con gusto le, le ayudo. Sí, solo quise recordarme el nombre que me dijo una aplicación, como que uno se puede inscribir y poner de que uno sabe, es nativo español, pero quiere aprender inglés con un nativo de inglés. Ah, sí, hace poco lo, lo compartí, pero acá lo tengo, ¿sabe que le instalé? Porque dije yo siempre, yo siempre la recomiendo porque yo ya la utilicé y a mí me gustó mucho la verdad porque son personas que de verdad están ahí con el propósito de aprender, no hacer pues otras cosas o hablar otras cosas. Entonces ahí María Luz, usted lo que tiene que hacer es iniciativa de hablarle a las personas, verdad la iniciativa de empezar a hablar con ellos y la aplicación se llama Hello Talk, aquí la voy a mandar en el Hello. en este chat, Hello Talk, de hablar, Hello Talk. Uh -huh. Ahí me dice si la encontró Es como un icono moradito Que tiene un montón de, de Signos de diálogo ad, adentro De colores ah, okay. uh -huh. de diálogo. Vio el mensaje que mandé aquí en el chat Ah, bye sí, sí, sí. Entonces ahí, ahí eso lo, lo descarga Y, y va, va a usted poder a practicar con nativos A veces mandan audios Se pueden mandar audios para que usted vaya desarrollando su listening, le, 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 le hecho de la escritura también. Y pues usted no, no tenga miedo de, de hablar a las personas. Al final usted lo que quiere es aprender, ¿verdad? Sí. A veces uno con pena dice, no, dice, pero como uno quiere aprender, usted mándele. Yo al principio me acuerdo que cuando lo, le empecé a utilizar, lo mandaba invitaciones y empezaba a hablar y a hablar. Y algunos solo dicen, ah, hola, ¿qué tal? Salud. Pero hay otros que sí practican más con uno. Entonces la cosa es encontrarse unos mínimo unos cinco, ¿verdad? Con quien hablar, porque obviamente a veces las personas se aburren y ya no van a hablar. Tal vez unos dos días, tres días, se les sigan el hilo a uno, ¿verdad? Unos cinco días, así que hay que tener su reserva para más. Así que pues, ojalá le funcione, María Luz, y como le digo, cual, pues cualquier cosa estamos a la orden y no sé si hay algo más en lo cual yo le podría ayudar. No solamente. Bueno, pues. No quiero comer. Ah, bueno, no, no, se, no se preocupe. Tenés, sí, no se preocupe, María. Los igual, espero que descanse mucho y gracias por su tiempo. Nos vemos mañana, ¿ok? Bueno, muchas gracias. Buenas noches, adiós, María. Adiós.